help of others and with our determination, I think we can do a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you want to say a few notes before? Some comments because I've been asked to comment on a number of things. Let me, let me make some brief comments. One, our love for Arabic language forced us to create our own Arabic content. We are launching in January Tagibedia, Talala Brazale, Electronic Encyclopedia of Arabic Content, on which we will have one million articles, completely hundred in the, on the internet now. We are not at all ignoring the Arabic language, but if you want to graduate students for the workplace, you need to have them fluent in English. I do not recruit any employee in my organization, in my 80 offices, if he is not English speaking. And I know that there are many organizations in Jordan like this. If we can go on writing poetry and singing songs about our language, but if we want to produce for the marketplace, if we want to stop talking about unemployment, they need to be fluent in English and in IT. We do not take any employee, including the telephone operator, including any level of staff, if he is not fluent in ICT skills and English language. That's number one. I've been asked what are we doing for the remote areas. I think I have here one of our partners. And uh, we, with the International Youth uh, Foundation, organization, foundation, foundation, and uh, uh, we established a, a, a model project with USAID and with the British Embassy, British Council, in Allah. In fact, there Allah. In fact, we had uh, the U.S. representative there, and I had, uh, I was uh, very pleased. Uh, I was sitting next to the U.S. representative because he was saying, Dear Allah, and I said, You're so close to Allah, I'm, I'm happy to be your friend. <laughs> Instead of saying, Dear Allah, I was saying, Dear Allah. Uh, are you here? Oh, yes, okay, great. <laughs> we were at the inauguration of this project. I want to tell you, I announced today that we are now venturing on a hundred Tarara Bogazale knowledge centers in all of Jordan including and particularly in the south of Jordan. This will be funded by us, established by us, and managed by us. So we, we are doing that. We are not just talking. We have a project for that. Now, in addition to that, I want to, again, so that because I've been asked, uh, there have been questions addressed uh, that concern. I recognize what His Excellency the Minister is doing. He has a tough job because change is difficult especially when you, when you are in government, and everybody knows this. So we are going to be change agents. We are going to force the government to change. We, are, we can do that because the government is there to serve us. I said some one time on the TV, and I was accused of being uh, outspoken, I said the government works for me. I am the employer. And I learned this from Carter. Jimmy Carter told me once, he said, I am the highest ranking employee in this country. My employer is the American people. And my job is to serve these people and to do what is in their interest. So I follow the same policy. The government is, is there to serve me. And they are employed by me. As a citizen, I'm not talking about Talal al Every citizen is the employer of this government. And, and, I, and the government is there to serve them. So I want to tell you what I need so that you can serve me. And I'm going to tell it at any cost, at, at any risk. Because I think, and I learned also from one great friend of mine, the Prime Minister of Bahrain used to tell me, I love you and I love talking to you because you distress me. And I said, I can't understand. He said, everybody comes to me and says, tells me all the beautiful things I need to hear. Everything is fine. Everything is great. Everybody loves you. And when you come, you come with a list telling me about what is wrong. Sheikh Khalifa of Bahrain, Prime Minister of Bahrain. And I learned from that, from that that a leader, a leader always wants to know what he needs to know and not what he loves to know. 
And that's what we do in this forum. We tell our leaders what they need to know and not what they love to know. This is what we got. This is our mission, and we're going to continue it. As far as this place is concerned, I want also to tell you that Allah was at this university because we're talking about democratizing. Yes, sir. What we do is provide equal opportunities for every citizen in the world to be able to graduate from Harvard while he is working in Nigeria or in the south, in the south of, of Egypt. At and avoiding the cost of travel, avoiding the, prob the problems of visas, which are becoming like entry to heavens. Sometimes to, it's easier to go to heaven than to get a visa to the U.S. or to Britain or to Australia or to Canada. I'm a Canadian. So I can tell you that the visa problems, because of what's coming in the world, are becoming almost half the world cannot get visas by nationality. Can you get one for a Afghani or an Iranian or a Syrian or an Iraqi or whatever? So, what is the solution? The solution is both ways. All universities are having problems. I know, and I spoke to Harvard president. They have a problem of funding. One, because the, the, of the budget, the fees, and the, 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 the scarcity of students who are fully paying, like the GCC countries and similar countries. Also because they are on an endowment fund. And the endowment fund, they spend its interest. They used to earn 9% on a number of billions. Now, a, a billion of dollars give you zero in endowment. So they have a problem. And they cannot touch the endowment. They have to uh, generate other income. We have a problem of funding. Among other things, we need to close the campuses. Stanford is completely virtual. And I don't think Stanford is a, is a stupid university. They don't have campuses. Most, by a report from the U.S., by the year 2020, 80% of universities in the U.S. will be virtual without any campus. This is the inevitable trend. You cannot avoid it. So we have to start thinking how to make, to convert our universities to digital universities. And how to get accredited. Because, again, if we want, I want to insist, I love universities, my universities. I love the countries. I love the Arab world. I love Jordan. But if you love, you, you have to be honest with, it, with, with the person you love. It is not at all possible to continue with the educational system we have. Because we will produce students, we organized here in this very place, a working, a working uh, for, uh, forum, a work day. We invited the graduates from different universities to help them, to help them how to prepare an application form, how to do an interview, etc. How to prepare your bio, your CV. You know that 50% of them could not prepare an application. They could not fill in an application. This is, this is sad. If I cannot employ them, I'm sorry. And all organizations of my equal will not employ them. We have to try to think not what we are proud of. We are proud of being an Arab. I am. I'm speaking English, but I'm a proud Arab. And you can't find a, pri a, pri a prouder Arab than me. But it doesn't mean that I have to stick to my Arabic language in a world which speaks English. This is in order to serve our children and our future generations, we need to do that. But anyway, we teach in this college, we only teach English. We teach French, we teach German, we teach Chinese, and we teach Arabic. We want Arabic to stay as a main language, but if the student comes out and he cannot work in an English environment, he cannot find a job. So, okay, go on producing graduates and say they are unemployed. Enjoy it. If you want to solve the unemployment problem, there is no other rule except to graduate students for the global marketplace, not for, for the Jordanian needs. Because all the Jordanian needs now are linked at part of the global marketplace. So please forgive me if I was a bit candid and a bit hard, but it is, this is what we need to be. I would like to recognize...